Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we will be sculpting some coffin nails and we are gonna be doing a cool pry design. So the first thing we're gonna do is what we always do. We are gonna push the cuticles back very, very gently with the cuticle pusher to make sure that we expose as much as we can of the nail plate. I am gonna go in with a medium sanding band at a low speed and I'll start off at the cuticles with small circular motions and then I will come down the sides and just lightly buff over the nail plate. Please be gentle when you do this. You do not have to be heavy handed. All we're just gonna do is mat the surface. Now, a good prep is super crucial. So I'm gonna get rid of all the dust. I've just got some alcohol on a wipe and I'm gonna go in with a thin coat of acid-free primer that I'm gonna let dry. Now we want max adhesion. So I am gonna be using a base coat, I always do. We'll be using a thin layer, but make sure that you have enough. You don't need to do it thick push it out to the sides very gently and I am only working on one side of the brush and I'll push it out to the cuticles and kind of slant the brush as I come down and make sure to cap the free edge don't get it on the skin a hard gel needs to be filed off but a lot of the manufacturers have started to do soak off base coats to be used with hard gel you can soak them off with acetone and preserve the nail a little bit more so you don't have to file all the way down if I do it on myself or other people, I usually use a hard gel base because I want it to last. I'm using a practice hand today. Forms can be a little bit tricky on that. These aren't the best quality forms. Put that little tab at the back just to give it some support. We are doing a coffin today. I will be pinching the front of it. Let's focus on getting it in the middle first and I always slant the forms down slightly. I am going to build the free edge out first with hard gel in pink today. From your secret i'll link everything down below i will start by attaching it at the free edge with a small amount scooping up with one side of the brush only sweeping it down i've been trying to do one max two fingers at a time to make sure that i control it and it is really really hot in here so it's better to do less and flash cure it in between so it doesn't run if i've got runny gels and it's hot i will also use a smaller brush and apply less when I'm happy with the free edge, what I'll do is I will give it a flash cure before I move on to the next one. All these like little flimsy edges on the side you can just nip off with some cuticle pushes. But don't try to alter the shape of the nail by cutting into that because you can risk it splitting. These are only joined by the free edge so you need to be a little bit careful so you don't break them off. I'm just going to do a protective layer first on the nails. We're not going to actually be building any structure. Because I want this thin and I want to file it a little bit, I do need some hold with this nail. So I'm going to pull down a slip layer first and I'm going to flash cure them in between. I am going to apply a very, very small amount that I'm going to push up to the cuticles and then bring down. Is what they look like when they're all been cured fully through and as you can see they have got absolutely no structure they are super flat and you can't leave them like this in order to save some filing what i'll do is i'll wipe them off i am just going to refine the shape i will start underneath so that i've got them coming nice and straight out the nail and i'm using a 100 over 180 grit file <laughs> holding the file at 90 degrees i will come down the sideboard and keep contact with the nail just to refine the shape and I'll just square off the free edge and make sure that you support the nail while you're doing this because it can break. Now I'm going to start building them a little bit. I am going to do them in several steps because this isn't a paint colour. If you're doing this on a natural nail, what can happen is it can burn if you put it on too thick, so don't do that. So I am going to start off by putting a small amount just down from the cuticle, and this is where I will start my upper arch. Now remember, we've got some product at the cuticle from the first round that we did, and we do not want to bulk that. I'm working in small circular motions, and I am pushing it towards the side walls, I'm not making contact with the skin. And when I approach the free edge, I am just going to start swiveling it down really, really gently. I don't like gel running away from me. 
So what I'll do is I will cure this in between. And also, if you're a beginner, it might be a good idea to do this in several steps so that you don't make a mess. If you apply too much gel at once, you risk it running into the slide walls. And I know some people tip their hands upside down, but sometimes that can be a little bit too late. Generally, I think it's better to apply less product and cure it in between. If you've got piles of product on, it can kind of accumulate in the middle and it's not gonna give you a nice shape anyway. If I need to apply a little bit more, what I'll do is I'll scoop out a small amount. I won't start where I ended, I'll start by joining it a little bit before. Now I've lush cured these in between and when I'm done with this, I will give them a full cure. Now on this last round, I am gonna focus on the structure. I am going to deposit the gel on the stress area. This is where it normally can break. And I will keep the gel in the middle in order to give it a nice apex and upper arch. Always add a little tiny bit more than I think I need because this will give me some room to file. And just to fill in some gaps if you're missing a little bit and flash cure them in between. When you're done, give them all a full cure. And before going into filing, wipe the tacky layer off with some alcohol on a pad. Now, because we filed in between, there isn't a lot of work to do, but we still need to kind of get it top notch. So again, I am gonna go underneath with a file. And I've also just whipped around really quickly on the side walls to make sure that they come out straight. I am gonna use a coarse barrel bit, but I'm gonna be very, very careful because I just need to debulk it that little, little tiny bit. I'm gonna come around the cuticles with that. Then I'm gonna go over the apex and the upper arch and come down on the sides in order to give it that nice curve on top. And I also want to thin out the free edge a little bit because we don't want that thick. If you're a beginner, you can use a safety bit. That's the one with the round head like I'm using now. Now this is a medium. It's just to kind of go over the roughness after the course. I always go in with a hand file at the end just to kind of refine the last shape because that'll give you super control and make sure that they are equal length. Now this is what they look like without the design. Really, really pretty. I've just put down two little dots so that I know where I want the width of the heart. And I'm also gonna go in with a dotting tool and just mark the height in. And I've just given this a little cure by the way. I'm coming in with a fine liner just to draw the shape out because I will be filling these with a very, very thin coat of a pale color just to kind of emphasize the colors on top and it will allow me to see where I'm working. I am using Savalan's liners today and they are highly pigmented. I am gonna mark out the center of the heart first just so that I kind of know where I am. Cure the lines in between. Now I am gonna come around the top with a really nice vibrant red just kind of following the arch of the heart. Now these are very pigmented, so they need to be cured through. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna do several thin layers and not just one thick one, because I don't want them uncured. And it's just to kind of raise the heart a little bit, because that's gonna be the focus point. If you make a little bit of a mess, you can just kind of put a brush with some alcohol on it and drag it across so that you clean it up a bit. So I wanted to make these really, really fancy. So I am gonna put quite a bit of bling on it and I am attaching the gems with some gem glue, placing them a few at a time and then curing them in between. And I don't wanna put these in top coat because they won't hold up. On the little finger, I also attached some gems. I've done it exactly the same way as I did with the heart. I put the biggest gem down first and flash cure that. And I went in with the two small ones. So when I gave them a full cure, I was looking at the nails and I thought, now we need just a little tiny bit more color. So I've gone in with the liners again and just kind of done an outline around the nails just to really make them pop. Like 
Now, we don't want top coat on the gems because that will matte them. That is why I've used a smaller brush. I've gone around the cuticles and I am pushing up towards the sides of the gems, but I'm not going on them because we really, really don't want to matte them down. And this is the final result. I am very, very happy with them. I think they're really flashy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it gave you some inspiration. So please like, subscribe and then hit that bell so you don't miss any nail crazy. And until next time, bye.